I'm going to show you part one and two. Um, I hope you sort of have made some progress, if not completed one and two. The main meal is parts three and four, but you can't really progress through three and four until you've got one and two there, okay? So I'm just going to show you the first two parts, show you the way I approach it, and then I will let you loose again to have to spend some more time on three and four, okay? So just look up with me, just look up. Um, even if you've finished one and two, I want you to see the way I approached it, because this is almost... It's almost a time game in some ways. Like the circle geometry question is frequently toward the end of the paper. And we, got, we know, like you can just pour all this time into a circle geometry question um, and, and waste your time for the rest of the paper, okay? So just as a general note, um, when you've got reading time, wait, when you've got reading time, as you're going through and you see this diagram, okay? If the answer jumps out at you, that's great. When you get to this question, go ahead and do it. If the answer does not jump out at you in 10 seconds, it's the last question you should do, okay? Because if it's not there in 10 seconds, you could spend 10 minutes on this and make no progress, and you don't have that time to waste, okay? So, if you see it quickly, go for it. If not, put it to one side. Let's have a look at the first two parts. What they ask at the beginning is, um, <laughs> it doesn't turn into a, uh, a circular geometry question just yet, they talk about similar triangles, okay? so. Within this diagram, you can see I've got this circle in place here. I've put the circle in because I know I'm going to get a circle eventually. I've put it in red to indicate I don't actually know that yet. So I'm not going to use any of its properties for part one. I'll only be able to use them after part two. Okay. Right, so first let's just focus on these triangles. Um, they tell us to look at ABC, that's the big triangle out here, and ADE, -E -E which is this little one just sort of on the outside. Okay. So to help me, what I've done is I've redrawn the two triangles because they're overlapping each other, right? When they're overlapping, my brain just gets confused and I can't see like which way is, are they supposed to be oriented to each other. I have trouble matching up which sides, like which ones correspond because they're sort of on top of each other. I think that's confusing. So that's why I've drawn these guys. You can draw them nice and roughly. When I have a look, uh, I pointed out to some of you before, these are our four tests for congruence. These are four tests for congruence. It's a little known fact, which is a bit sad, that the f there are four tests for similarity which correspond exactly to these, right? I've put them in order of kind of sides. All sides, two sides, one side. This is for congruence. Each of these tests has a version for similarity. So for example, SSS. What would that mean for similar triangles? All sides, all three sides, correspond to and are in proportion to the other sides in the bigger or smaller triangle, right? Um, this one here, you're going to have two sides that are in proportion instead of, or two pairs I should say, and then you'll need the angle that's in the middle. What do we call that one again? Well, we, rather than say in the middle, we have a special word for it. We call it the included angle. Okay. Then you've got this one, that'll become equiangular, and so on. Right? Now you have a look at the data that you've got. You have to rule out some of them. Right? Some of them are very easy to rule out. For instance, RHS is irrelevant. Right? Why? No right angles, at least none that I know about. In fact, I'm pretty sure they can't be because that doesn't look very Pythagorean to me. So that's out. What about SSS? Can I use that? No, you don't have to. I can't use that because if you have a look, I've got all three sides in the little triangle, but I do not have all three sides in the big triangle. So that's out. I've already ruled these ones out. So you can see, like I know people look at a circle geometry question or a geometry question in general, and you just know so much geometry now, you have to choose. So I'm trying to, like in multiple choice, you know when you look at four answers? And some of them are just ridiculous, right? So get them out of the way first, and that'll make this easy to do. Now I only have to choose between two. Have a look, which is the um, better choice. I think SAS is the better choice, right? Because look, I've got quite a few sides, quite a few, and I don't, I don't know many angles at all, okay? So now that I've got, I've settled which direction I'm going to go in, now I'm ready to redraw my diagram with the relevant information highlighted, okay? So first I've got ADE, I've got that in the orientation that's there. And what I've done is I've colored the sides so I can see well, which ones correspond to which, okay? So I've got, uh, let's see, three, three, four here. Now when you have a look, you can see it's sort of upside down from the other one, right? Can you see it's upside down? This happens frequently. Because these lines are not parallel to each other, then this guy here, A, is going to correspond to A, B, C. Okay. Now, that might not be immediately obvious to you, but once I put in the numbers, I hope you'll see. A, B is how long? It's A. It's a longer side, right? And then A, C is 6. 6. 
six. Oh. AC, it's the shorter side. Ah, oh, now you can see. There's a corresponding pair. There's a corresponding pair. Looking good. I need one last fact again. Do you remember what the last fact is? Angle. Yeah, I need that. I need the included angle, right? And it just so happens that this angle is in fact common. Okay. So I, I'm pretty much done. I'm not going to write it all out, but I would say, here's my structure. In this triangle and that triangle, the first thing I start with is the angle. Okay. I'm going to say these. This angle is common, right? So I'll write that down. And then I'll say, okay, I've got to match up corresponding sides. Now, please note, the sides I'm matching up are the corresponding sides in the different triangles. It's not these two. These are not corresponding sides. These are corresponding sides. That's why I've done them in the same color. So I'm going to go 3 over 6 is a half. So that's one ratio. And then I'm going to go 4 over 8. That's a half. So now they're equal. This is worth writing down. Um, <coughs> there are very long ways, uh, long and... Um, uh, obtuse ways of saying this. So I think this is the shortest one I've ever encountered. That you've got sides, right? And um, another way of, like when you say angle is included, that's talking about the angle. But if you're talking about the sides, you say the sides are about that angle. That means on both sides, okay? So sides about equal angles, just happens to be one angle in this case, but you get the idea. Sides about equal angles are in proportion. Seven words. Okay, I think that's pretty concise. Come in, grab a seat. Okay, so very good, we've got similarity. Now we're ready to make this a circle geometry question, okay? Now remember, you just proved that these triangles are similar, okay? So I've got that in the back of my mind, they're probably gonna want me to use that in some way. I wanna show that this guy over here, uh, B, D, E, C, is cyclic, okay? It's cyclic. Now, we actually really don't know that many things about cyclic quadrilaterals. There's only a very small number of properties that I can appeal to. Anyone want to tell me, just throw out properties of cyclic quads, yeah. Um, the exterior angle is equal to the interior opposite angle. Okay, I could go straight to the one that I'm going to use. Oh, it's, um, I'm going to use that, okay. There's an easier one that um, usually comes to mind. Um, the opposite angles are complementary. Uh, uh, supplementary? The okay. So, one. That most people, good. most people, the first property that comes to mind, the main property for cyclic chords, is that opposite angles, opposite angles are supplementary. Okay, I could use that, but there's a quicker way. If you've got like alpha, right, and 180 minus alpha, then you've got an angle on a straight line here, right? So that makes this alpha, and that's a whole other property of its own. This guy over here is outside the cyclic quad, so we call it an exterior angle. I'm going to highlight it. This is really important to me, this angle. Right? So this angle over here, oops, not two lines because I've already used two lines. I'll color it in. This angle over here is the exterior angle of the cyclic quad I'm after. Right? If only I had some way to prove that it was equal to this guy. Oh wait, I do, right? Look, look at my similar triangles that I just drew. Um, A, E, D, that's over here. Right? And this angle over here, A, B, C, aha, look, it corresponds. It had bear it that it corresponds, otherwise they're not similar. Okay? So for part two, I'm going to say angle A, E, D is equal to angle A, B, C. Reason? Cor corresponding what? Angles. Corresponding angles in similar triangles are equal. Therefore, like next line, therefore B, D, E, C is a cyclic chord. Well, I can even just say it's cyclic. Because what? What's the property I'm taking advantage of? Exterior, exterior. exterior angle of a cyclic quadrilateral is equal to the what is that in relation to the opposite interior angle? Okay. There's another way you can do it because I told you the side lengths. Yes. Three times eight equals to four times six. Three times eight is equal to four times six. Yep. Yeah, okay. All right. So you could say that it's a it's a little trickier, but it works. Um, that you've got the hold on, three times eight. Yeah, yeah. Um, what you've got here is the products of the intercepts, one, two, and one, two. The products of the intercepts on secants are equal. Okay. Now, the reason why that will take you a little longer is, number one, the reason is just longer to say. Number two, you then have to reason a little bit about the fact that, like, what does it mean that these things are intercepts, okay? And therefore, well, that means BD and EC are chords on the circle um, because chords are the intercept that you're getting here, uh, and so therefore they're cyclic, okay? okay. So, uh, yeah, that's true, that's true, okay? So you can go the sides path or you can go the angles path. Uh, I think most people will see the angles first, but sides will work just fine.